Hey, thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We've got a whole lot going on today. We're going to go fast. We're going to get bugs in our teeth. We're going to do a little cutting with a straight edge. We're going to show how to get some practice for a 3G MIG weld, open, open butt uh, groove weld, using uh, three quarter plates that are not beveled. And we're going to use some beveled plates and show some techniques and uh, how those go in. So first of all, I'm going to do some cutting don't want to do it inside because I don't want to sweep up all that mess. So I'm going to wheel out a little portable welding table right outside the door, set it up and uh, pull out the oxyacetylene cart and do a little cutting out on the concrete so I don't have to do so much sweeping and cleaning up. That's a nice thing about the little portable table. It's, uh, it's kind of light duty. I mean, you're not going to whop on that thing with a big 16-pound uh, sledgehammer but it, it, it has its place, you know, if you want to do some welding outside, like it's pretty outside today, and uh, some cutting outside in this case, just pull it outside and, uh, and put it back when you're done. Now last week's video, I did a little setup shutdown procedure using the OxyFuel torch, and somebody commented and talked about using a straight edge to cut on straight cuts, and so I thought, well, my, I don't hardly ever do that, but might as well kind of play with that a little bit. So I've got a piece of inch and a half square tubing here and uh, taking some dry runs, see how smoothly I can drag it along that, uh, that thing and it jitters a little bit but we'll see what happens here. It works better I think if you can uh, take a few dry runs, preheat and then all, it also burns some of that mill scale off. Now the inch and a half tubing here just so happens to rest on that uh, collar nut. It's kind of a tight uh, tight gap, the, the uh, cones are actually touching the metal, kind of tighter than I usually cut, but hey, it works okay. Decent cut, only a few little alligator teeth on there. So uh, I read that little Audell pocket manual that I mentioned, and it mentioned that if you turn the oxygen down a little bit, you might get rid of some of that stuff. So I turned the oxygen pressure down five, and we're gonna make another run here. And uh, again, took a little dry run, well, you can see my, my tip my tip to work distance is all over the place here. Not very consistent, uh, but it just shows how forgiving it is because it uh, still came out pretty good. You don't have to maintain your uh, tip to work distance like a, you know, sixteenth of an inch tolerance or anything in order to have a good cut. In fact, if you've ever been to welding shows, you see the, the uh, reps for oxy fuel equipment, sometimes they'll hold that tip almost an inch away from the uh, cut and still make a good cut. In fact, if you got a steady enough hand, you can uh, turn the acetylene off because the oxygen actually is what's making the cut, and you can still cut. You can continue the cut with only oxygen. I said you can continue the cut with only oxygen. <laughs> Somebody's going to call bullshit on me on that one, I know, but it's true. I've done it before on an automated setup. It'll continue the cut if everything's going just right. It will, uh, it'll go because once that chemical reaction gets started and the metal gets oxidizing, the oxygen stream will continue the cut without any acetylene at all. Now I showed last week on how I kind of position my hand sometimes to make a cut. I always make sure I can make the run uh, without getting in a bind before I get there before I actually make the cut. I think that's good practice. All right, on to the MIG welding. I've got some MIG welding. The reason I was cutting those plates up is to do some 3G uh, open butt MIG uh, joints, but this is good practice too. I've got some three quarter inch bar stock laying around and just gapping it and uh, doing a outside corner joint like this is surprising how good a practice it is because it's I use exactly the same settings for this joint with no bevel, just uh, set it up at a 90 with a 1 8 gap as I did for the, the plates you see laying on the table there that I cut on uh, for practice that have a 37 and a half degree bevel. So let me show you the root pass on this one. I'm staying on the front front edge of the puddle. That's very important when you're doing a open butt root pass on a uh, on a plate test. You gotta stay right up there on the front. If you get too far you'll shoot wire through. If you stay too far back you won't penetrate. So you got to stay kind of on the ragged edge. I was using 19 volts and about 245 inches a minute of wire feed speed. And I'll show you that again. I'm wiggling just a little bit side to side, trying to keep a pretty short stick out and keep my gun angle 
uh, consistent as I go down, not change it, just keep it consistent. So that's the root pass, and you can see that, that saw cut edge, it looks kind of like the uh, uh, beveled joint, and there's the root pass penetration, checking that there. So the next pass goes in kind of like this. I extended the wire here just to kind of show you how that goes in. I just make a little arc, like a rainbow almost, because I want to cut across the leading edge of that puddle. I want to trace the leading edge of the puddle because that's where it happens. That's where the rubber meets the road is on the leading edge of the puddle. And you need to sweep that arc close to the leading edge of the puddle to get to get good penetration and good fusion. Now this could be a little bit hotter. Watch the leading edge. Now I'm getting all squirrely right there. That's what you don't want to do. I'll go a little bit fast, a little bit too wide. Just kind of nice and easy and pause on the edges. And that's the second pass here. And I usually do a 3 8 test joint in three passes. So it's good to do three passes here on this joint just for the practice. And the third pass goes just like this, pausing again on those uh, corners, hold those corners, and uh, not spending much time across the middle. That was a little cold on that. It could have been a little hotter, but that's why I'm doing this practice before I do the actual joint. Uh, so for the actual uh, 3 8 uh, bevel joints, that is. Now this is the 3 8 bevel joint. You see how big that tack is? I like a big tack on the end. Here's the reason why. If you get a teeny tack and you light up on it, sometimes it'll spring open or spring shut, and you'll lose the gap that you wanted. So put a little extra tack on the end. That's a good tip for you because you don't want you, once you get a one eighth gap, you don't want it to all of a sudden shut to three thirty seconds or open up to five thirty seconds. You want to keep it at an eighth inch gap. Now I'm showing here the difference. The first arc shot there was the three eighths plate with the bevel on it. This is the square cut at a 90. Now I'm going back to the beveled joints here, and you can see the the, uh, the puddle kind of get V-shaped there in the, in the end. And that's basically the only difference, exact same settings. Okay, I stopped a few times. On a test, you do not want to stop unless you know it's absolutely necessary, something screws up or whatever. If you do have to stop, you want to get a grinder and you want to feather those tacks, or not the tacks, but you want to feather the end of the weld uh, with a grinder a good three-quarter inch back so that you can light up and, and it has time to heat up and penetrate. I stopped again the last couple of inches. I took the grinder out and I ground it and feathered it and uh, lit up and went again. Again, you can see short stick out, staying on the front edge of the puddle, not much side-to-side -side motion. It doesn't really require any side-to-side -side motion. It's just a habit I can't seem to break. And then I'm going all the way to the bottom here now, just for kicks. Well, it was good and hot, I figured, why stop? Just go ahead and start going uphill again once I got the root, uh, that root down. That way I'd be good and, good and hot, good and preheated. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to hold the corners long enough, and I want to come out wide enough to be about a sixteenth below flush. I want to have uh, three passes total, and I want to be about a sixteenth below flush. Not much more... Uh, not much lower than that and not much higher. If I'm a little higher, that's fine. If I'm a little lower, I'm going to have to hang a long time on making the cap. So that's what I had. It's, it's, a, it's pretty close. A little bit lower than I wanted, but I can, I can make it happen. You can see how much metal I carried on that second pass right there. Now for the rest of it, I turned the wire feed speed up a little bit so I wouldn't have to hang, and it worked a little bit better. Um, it was a little bit of a stretch for me, uh, the first half of it. This is a little bit better, a little hotter, cutting in a little bit better at the leading edge of the puddle. And this is probably around 270 inches a minute on the wire feed speed, something like that. Now, before the cover pass, uh, let it cool a little bit. Now, for practice joints, not for tests, you never want to do this on a test. Practice joints, you can give it a quick d uh, dunk. It's for a few seconds. Make sure it's hot enough still that the... Uh, the water uh, evaporates really quickly. You don't want to just you don't want to do three passes back to back, or that cover pass will get all out of whack with you. It'd be hard to handle. So this is the cover pass. You can see I'm holding, pausing just a little bit at, at each side. I'm not going any wider than I need to go. You see the puddle is good and hot. It's following me just a little bit, but it's not following me all over the place. It's starting to cool as I move across. It begins to cool and follow me, but it doesn't really follow me all over the place. That's the kind of puddle you want to make sure you're hot enough to cut into that leading edge. And that's the final product on the cover pass. 
uh, just barely went a little wide enough to, to tie in. These are the two tie-ins where I stopped and but ground and feathered and then uh, they came out they came out pretty good and that's the big tack I wanted to show you. Again, put a big tack because if you put a teeny tap tack and then light up, it'll pop loose. Okay? All these were run at 19 volts, uh, mostly 245 inches a minute. Uh, that second pass was run at about 280 inches a minute when I wanted to fill a little bit more. All right, the tips. Uh, use a one eighth gap with uh, either you know feather edge or up to a sixteenth land. Make the tacks big enough to maintain that gap, and you can rewind this and read the rest of them. All right, that's it for today. I hope you got something out of it, and uh, thanks for watching. Please visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com and also Welding-TV.com.